Good evening. We, the Zoom players, will offer a selection of William Shakespeare's sonnets. We begin. Hello, I'm Rebecca, and I will be reading Sonnet 57 in the Quarantine Sonnet series. Being your slave, what should I do but tend to upon the hours and times of your desire? I have no precious time at all to spend, nor services to do till you require. Nor dare I chide the world without end hour, whilst I, my sovereign, watch the clock for you, nor think the bitterness of absence sour when you have bid your servant once adieu. Nor dare I question with my jealous thought where you may be, or your affairs, suppose. But, like a sad slave, stay and think of naught. Save where you are, how happy you make those. So true a fool is love, that in your will, though you do anything, he thinks no will. Hi, well, I guess, well done, Rebecca. I love that. That was great. Um, I'm Simon. Um, I'm going to be doing Sonnet uh, 138. When my love swears that she is made of truth, I do believe her. Though I know she lies, that she might think me some untutored youth unlearned in the world's full subtleties. Thus, Vainly thinking that she thinks me young, although she knows my days are past the best. Simply, I credit her full speaking tongue. On both sides thus is simple truth suppressed. But wherefore says she not she is unjust, and wherefore say not I that I am old? Oh, love's best habit is in seeming trust. And age in love loves not to have years told. Therefore, I lie with her and she with me. And in our faults by lies we flattered be. Well done, Simon. Well done. I'm Liz and I'll be reading Sonnet 15 from the Fair Youth sequence. When I consider everything that grows, holds in perfection, a little moment, that this huge stage presenteth naught but shows, whereon the stars in secret influence comment. When I perceive that men, as plants increase, cheered and checked even by the selfsame sky, vaunt in their youthful sap at height decrease, and wear their brave state out of memory, then the conceit of this inconstant, inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight, where wasteful time debateth with decay, to change your day of youth to sullied night, and all in war with time for love of you. As he takes from you, I engraft you new. That was great, Liz. Um, I'm Marissa, I'm reading Sonnet 129. The expense of spirit in a waste of shame is lust in action. Until action, lust is perjured, murderous, bloody, full of blame, savage, extreme, rude, cruel, not to trust. Enjoyed no sooner but despised straight, past reason hunted, and no sooner had, past Reason hate it as a swallowed bait, on purpose laid to make the taker mad. Mad in pursuit and in possession so, had having and in a quest to have extreme, a bliss in proof and proved a very woe. Before a joy proposed, behind a dream. All this the world well knows, yet none knows well, shun the heaven that leads men to this hell. Thank you, Marissa. That was lovely and an intense sonnet, actually. I think the most intense one we had. 
Uh, this is Elon Sofer coming at you with Sonnet 129. Where it ought to be, I bore the canopy, with my extern the outward honoring, or lay great bases for eternity, which proves more short than waste or ruining. Have I not seen dwellers on form and favor lose all and more by paying too much rent for compound sweet, foregoing simple savor, pitiful thrivers in their gazing spent? No, let me be obsequious in thy heart, and, th and take thou my obla oblation, poor but free, which is not mixed with seconds, knows no art, but mutual render, only me for thee. Hence, thou sovereigned informer, a true soul, with, when most impeached stands least in thy control. I'll turn it over to Charles. Hey, this is Charles. I'm Charles. Uh, I will be doing Sonnet 127. Um, in the old age black not counted fair, or if it were, it were it not your beauty's name, but now is black beauty's successive heir, and beauty slandered with a bastard shame. For since each hand hath put on nature's power, fearing the foul and the arts have borrowed face, Sweet beauty hath no name, no holy brower, nor is profaned in not lives in disgrace. Therefore, for my mistress's brow are vain and black, her eye is so suited, and they mourners seem. At such who not born fair, no beauty lack, slandering creation with false esteem. Yet so they mourn, becoming to their woe, that every tongue says beauty should look so. Uh, I believe I will turn it over to Kaylee. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Charles. Uh, my name is Kaylee, and I am reading Sonnet 60. Like as the waves make towards the pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Each changing place with that which goes before, in sequent toil all forwards do contend. Nativity, once in the main of light, crawls to maturity, wherewith being crowned, crooked eclipses gainst his glory fight. And time that gave doth now his gift confound. Time doth transfix the flourish set on youth, and delves the parallels in beauty's brow, feeds on the rarities of nature's truth, and nothing stands but for his scythe to mow. And yet, to times in hope, my verse shall stand, praising thy worth, despite his cruel hand. Now it's uh, Erica's turn. Hello, everyone. I'm Erica Soto, and I will be reading Sonnet 2. When forty winters shall besiege thy brow and dig deep trenches in thy beauty's field, thy youth's proud livery, so gazed on now, will be a tattered weed of small worth held. Then being asked where all thy beauty lies, where all the treasure of thy lusty days, to say within thine own deep, sink, deep sunken eyes, were an all-eating shame and thriftless praise. How much more praise deserve thy beauty's use if thou could answer this fair child of mine shall sum my account and make my old excuse, proving his beauty by succession thine. This were to be new made when thou art old, and see thy blood warm when thou feelst it cold. Okay, now I will turn it over to Nick. Thank you, Erica, that was lovely. Hi, I'm Nick and I will be doing Sonnet 104. To me, fair friend, you never can be old. For as you were when first your eye I eyed, such seems your beauty still. Three winters cold have from the forests shook three summers pride. Three beauteous springs to yellow autumn turned in process of the seasons have I seen. Three April perfumes and three hot Junes burn. 
is first I saw you flesh, fresh, which yet are green. Uh, yet doth beauty like a dial hand steal from his figure, no point perceived. So your sweet hue, which methinks still doth stand, hath motion, and mine eye may be deceived. For fear of which, hear this, thou age unbred, ere you were born, was beauty's summer dead. Thank you. And now I will turn it over to Mr. Michael Serpy. Thank you, Nick. That was lovely. I'm Michael Serpy, and I'll be reading Sonnet 69. Nice. <laughs> Those parts of thee that the world's eye doth view want nothing that the thought of hearts can mend. All tongues, the voice of souls, give thee that due, uttering bare truth, even so as foes commend. Thy outward thus with outward praise is crowned, but those same tongues that give thee so thine own, in other accents, do this praise confound by seeing farther than the eye hath shown. They look into the beauty of thy mind, and in that guess they measure by thy deeds. Then churls their thoughts, although their eyes were kind, to thy fair flower add the rank smell of weeds. But why then odor matcheth not they show? The soil is this, that doth dust come and grow. Thank you. And now, I'll be, now I'll be passing it to Ari. Thank you, Michael. This is Ari Spence coming at you as a disembodied voice with Sonnet 17. Who will believe my verse in time to come if it were filled with your most high deserts? Though yet heaven knows it is but as a tomb which hides your life and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes and in fresh numbers number all of your graces, the age to come would say, this poet lies. Such heavenly touches ne'er touch earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with their age, be scorned like old men of less truth than tongue, and your true right be termed a poet's rage and stretched meter of an antique song. But were some child of yours alive that time, you should live twice in it, and in my rhyme. Now I'll be passing it to Simon. Actually to Brady. Thanks. I have Sonnet 23. This is one of my favorites. As an unperfect actor on the stage who with his fear is put beside his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage whose strength's abundance weakens his own heart. So I, for fear of trust, forget to say the perfect ceremony of love's right, and in mine own love's strength seems to decay or charge with burthen of my own love's might. Oh, let my looks be then the eloquence and dumb presagers of my speaking breast who plead for love and look for recompense more than that tongue that hath more expressed. Oh, learn to read what silent love hath writ, to hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. Hi again, this is Elon coming back at you with Sonnet 106. When in the chronicle of wasted time, I see descriptions of the fairest whites and beauty making beautiful old rhyme in praise of ladies dead and lovely knights. Then in the blazon of sweet beauty's best, of hot, of foot, of lip, of eye, of brow, I see their antique pen would have expressed even such a beauty as your master now. So all their praises are but prophecies of this our time, all you prefiguring. And for they looked but with divining eyes, they had not skill enough your worth to sing. For we, which now behold these present days, had eyes to wander, but lacked tongues to praise. And uh, 
Uh, coming up next is Simon. Over to you, Simon. Thank you, Elan. That was very good. Um, I'm going to bring to you Sonnet 130. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be, if hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that far from, that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go, my mistress when she walks treads on the ground. And yet by heaven I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. Um, thank you, and I am going to pass it over, it appears, to uh, Liz. Liz. Thank you, Simon. One classic sonnet to another. This is Sonnet 18, in honoring the beautiful day. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too the hot, sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often in its gold complexion dimmeth, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou oust, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade when in eternal lines to time thou growst. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. And I'm gonna turn that one over to wow. now. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, that was beautiful. I was wondering when somebody would pull that one out. Hello, this is Nick again, and now I am going to read Sonnet 33. Full many a glorious morning have I seen flatter the mountain tops with sovereign eye, kissing with golden face the meadows green, gilding pale streams with heavenly alchemy. Anon permit the basest clouds to ride with ugly rack on his celestial face, and from the forlorn world his visage hide, stealing unseen to west with this disgrace. Even so, my sun, one early morn, did shine with all triumphant splendor on my brow. But out alack, he was but one hour mine. The region cloud hath masked him from me now. Yet him, for this my love, no whit disdaineth. Sons of the world may stain when heaven's sun staineth. Okay, and now I am going to turn it back to Kaylee. Uh, thank you, that was beautiful. Uh, I'm Kaylee and this is Sonnet 88. When thou shalt be disposed to set me light and place my merit in the eye of scorn, upon thy side against myself I'll fight and prove thee virtuous, though thou art fors forsworn. With my own weakness being best acquainted, <laughs> upon thy part I can set down a story of faults concealed where, wherein I am attained, that thou in losing me shalt win much glory. And I by this will be a gainer too, for bending all my loving thoughts on thee. The injuries that to myself I do, doing the vantage, double vantage me, such is my love to thee I belong, that for thy right myself will bear all wrong. 
Okay, and uh, next up is Becca. It's very moving. Ooh. I am Rebecca, and I will now be reading number 71. No longer mourn for me when I am dead, then you shall hear the surly sullen bell giving warning to the world that I am fled from this vile world with vilest worms to dwell. Nay, if you read this line, remember not the hand that writ it. For I love you so that I and your sweet thoughts would be forgot if thinking on me then should make you woe. Oh, if I say you look upon this verse, when perhaps I, compounded, am with clay, do not so much as my poor name rehearse, but let your love, even with my life, decay, lest the wise world should look into your moan and mock you with me after I am gone. And now I am turning it over to you, Brady. Thank you. This is Sonnet 3 because it has the word mother in it. Look in thy glass and tell the face thou viewest. Now is the time that face should form another, whose fresh repair, if now thou not renewest, thou dost beguile the world, unbless some mother. For where is she so fair, whose uneared womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry? Or who is he so fond, will be the tomb of his self-love to stop posterity? Thou art thy mother's glass, and she in thee calls back the lovely April of her prime. So thou through windows of thine age shalt see, despite of wrinkles, this thy golden time. But if thou live remembered not to be, die single, and thine image dies with thee. And I'll pass it on to Erica. So guy just decided to drive by blasting loud music, but I'm gonna give it my best. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica, and I will be reading Sonnet 116. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor man ever loved. Now I'll be passing it over to Serpy. Wonderful job, Erica. Thank you. Uh, I'll be reading Sonnet 98. From you, I have been absent in the spring, when proud pied April, dressed in all his trim, hath put a spirit of youth in everything. That heavy Saturn laughed and leaped with him. Yet nor the lays of birds, nor the sweet smell of different flowers and odor and in hue, could make me any summer story tell, or from their proud lap pluck them where they grew. Nor did I wonder, at the lily's white, nor praise the deep vermilion and the rose. They were but sweet, but figures of delight. Drawn after you, all pattern, you pattern of all those. Yet seemed in winter still, you away, as with your shadow, I with these did play. Thank you. Hello, I'm Erica, and I will be reading Sonnet 141. In faith I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they in thee a thousand errors note. But tis my heart that loves what they despise, who in despite of you is pleased to dote. Not are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted, nor tender feeling to base touches prone, nor taste nor smell desire to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone. 
but my five wits nor my five senses can't dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man thy proud heart slave and vassal wretch to be only my plague thus far i count my gain that she makes me sin awards me pain thank you erica that was lovely all right now i'm going to do sonnet 24. mine eye hath played the painter and hath sealed thy beauty's form in table of my heart my body is the frame wherein tis held and perspective it is best painter's art for through the painter must you see his skill to find where your true image pictured lies which in my bosom shop is hanging still that hath his windows glazed with thine eyes now see what good turns eyes for eyes have done mine eyes have drawn thy shape and thine from me are windows to my breast where through the sun delights to peep to gaze therein on thee. Yet eyes this cunning want to grace their art. They draw but what they see, know not the heart. And now I'm going to turn it back to Mike Serpy. Thank you so much, Nick. That was a beautiful reading. Um, and I will be, for my third and final reading, I'll give you Sonnet 29. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state. In trouble, deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy contented least. Yet in these thoughts, myself almost despising, happily, I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising, from sullen earth sings him at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, and that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Thank you. And now I shall turn it over. I shall turn it over to Liz. Thank you, Serpy. That was awesome. Thanks for doing this. This is great. I will be reading Sonnet 73. That time of year thou mayst in me behold, when yellow leaves or none or few do hang, upon those boughs which shake against the cold, bear ruined choirs where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day, as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away, death's second self that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire that on the ashes of his youth doth lie, as the deathbed whereon it must expire, consumed with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well, which thou must leave ere long. So next up is Ilan. Thank, Thank you very much, Liz. That was beautiful. Uh, and I will be reading for you today, uh, Sonnet 134. So now I have confessed that he is thine, and I myself am mortgaged to thy will. Myself I'll forfeit, so that other mine, thou wilt restore to be by comfort still. But thou wilt not, nor he will not be free, for thou art covetous, and he is kind. He learned, but surety, like but surety, like to write for me, under that bond that him as fast doth bind. The statue of thy beauty thou wilt take, thou usurer that puts forth all to use. And sue a friend came debtor for my sake, so him I'll lose through my unkind abuse. Him I have lost, thou hast both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet I am not free. And now on to Kaylee. Thank you, that was um, really nice. 
Uh, my name is Kaylee, and I am going to read uh, Sonnet 27, which I just found, but it is about uh, being isolated and separated from the person <laughs> uh, you love, so uh, it seems appropriate. Okay. <clears throat> Weary with toil, I haste me to my bed, the deer repose for limbs with travel tired, but then begins a journey in my head to work my mind when body's work expired. For then my thoughts from far where I abide intend a zealous pilgrimage to thee and keep my drooping eyelids open wide, looking on darkness which the blind do see. Save that my soul's imaginary sight presents thy shadow to my sightless view, which like a jewel hung in ghastly night makes black night beauteous and her old face new. Lo, thus by day my limbs, by night my mind, for thee and for myself no quiet find. And, uh, and up next is Charles. Thank you. Uh, I will be uh, reading Sonnet 30. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought and with old woes new well my dear times waste. Then came I drown and I honest to flow for precious friends hid in death's dateless night and weep a fresh love's long since canceled woe and moan the expense of many a vanished sight, then I grieve at grievance for, foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell or, or uh, the sad account of for the moon moon, which I knew, which I knew pay as if not paid before, but if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. And I will give it back to Serpy. Charles, that was lovely. Uh, what a fun tongue twister of a sonnet. Dear friends, this has been another performance from the Zoom players. We bid you adieu. I ask that you stay safe, stay smart, stay healthy. Thank you. And good night. <laughs>